If you're a builder, and if you've been watching this AI coding movement from the sidelines, maybe feeling a little left behind, maybe a little skeptical, I want you to know that you're not alone. I mean, these last few years have been relentless. Every week, there's a new tool promising to change everything. And it's easy to feel like you've missed the boat, like everyone else has figured this out, while you're struggling to just find the time to leave the comfort of hand coding your code base and start to really embrace an AI first approach. But here's what I've learned in these past two years. Your skepticism was actually healthy because the real question that we're trying to answer now is, how do we leverage our years of experience and our unique tastes and our product insights in this new era of AI-first development? Because the truth is, our experience as builders matters more than ever, just in a different way than most developers think it does. Look, the shift is happening, and we're past the question of whether humans or AI are better at writing code. As professional builders, what matters now is how we adapt our experience and our taste to become excellent at managing and directing agents that execute our product vision. In this video, I'll get into five critical skills that matter more than ever for us as full stack builders, and some of them we already have an unfair advantage. Others are new. And to help bring you up to speed, I wanna trace back some of the key changes that have happened over the past two years to where we are today, because when we step back to see how we got here, the path becomes clear. If you're new here, I'm Brian Castle, and here on my channel, I focus on helping professionals like you and me build better with AI. I also send a free weekly newsletter called The Builder Briefing. It's a five minute read. It cuts through the noise and the hype to focus on what actually works. You can get yours by going to buildermethods.com. And subscribers are always the first to hear about my next live workshop where we dig into what's working right now when building with AI. Let's start with a quick timeline. It was around 2022, 23, with tools like GitHub's Copilot that tab completion started to bring AI into our code bases. And if your early experience was like mine, then you were probably pretty skeptical and you were probably right. AI completing our lines and our methods, that was pretty impressive, especially at the time. But when it missed the mark, which it often did, it caused more friction than actual improvements in speed. But for some of us, we saw glimpses of promise. It wasn't difficult to see how once the underlying models improved, then tab completion and wider scale code generation could actually change the game. And it turns out we didn't have to wait very long for those models to get better. Phase two is where things got interesting and it's where people started to split into two camps. In 2024, tools like Cursor and Windsurf introduced agent mode and suddenly AI wasn't just completing our code, it was writing entire features from our prompts. Meanwhile, the vibe coding movement exploded. Non-technical founders building apps in hours, posting their wins on Twitter. And if you were skeptical about that, you were absolutely right. Those weren't real products. They were demos. They were prototypes. They didn't have real error handling, no edge cases, no scalability. And during that period, for those of us using the more pro tools like Cursor and VS Code, it still felt messy. We were prompting in circles, we were spending more time explaining what we wanted than it would have taken us to just write it ourselves. So if you checked out during that phase, I get it. But a lot of us continued to dig in with cautious optimism, because here's what was actually happening. The capability had shifted. We went from fill in the blank to build this thing. And the tools could handle real complexity, multiple files, context across your code base. The models and tooling were starting to come into place, but we haven't quite figured out the workflow, how to deploy the right inputs to get the right outputs. And that mismatch led to a lot of frustration. And I think that's because we were operating like code writers instead of like architects. We were trying to write better prompts when what we really needed was an entirely different way of building. And that brings us to early 2025, when Claude Code introduced their terminal-based interface, pulling us even further away from coding ourselves. And within weeks, there was a noticeable shift in sentiment among professional developers across the industry. The skepticism had faded away, and we started to trust coding agents to actually handle complex coding tasks autonomously. Now, I think that's exciting, but I'm also seeing it drive a deeper fear out there, that we're losing our craft entirely, that all of our years of experience, all of our knowledge of how systems work, that won't matter anymore. In my view, the opposite is true. Our experience matters now more than ever. Because our bottleneck is no longer writing and rewriting code by hand. That's a solved problem. So what matters now is knowing what to build and how to architect it. That's on us. AI can implement any pattern we describe, but it can't choose which pattern is right. 
It can't understand our users. It can't make strategic calls that mean the difference between whether our product succeeds or fails. As builders, that's always been our real craft. So the question becomes, what are the most important skills that we need to focus on in this new era of building with AI? Well, I see five key skills where full stack experience becomes your superpower and you can use it to gain an unfair advantage. The first is the most important, and for me, it's why I got into this in the first place. Now, we know that AI can build features incredibly fast, but it can't tell you which features to build and why. It can't sit with a customer and understand what they're struggling with versus what they say that they need. And it can't make the call on narrowing the scope for an MVP versus building the full feature requirement. So leaning into our product management skill is more important than ever. And we can turn this into a multiplier by combining our technical experience with really understanding the why behind every feature. It's the difference between randomly prompting and actually building a product that solves a real problem for real people. So we know the what and the why behind our product. Now, how do we communicate that to our AI agents so that they can execute our vision perfectly? You've heard me talk a lot on this channel about spec-driven development, and it's the way the professionals build now. But how do we create the best possible specifications that set us up for success? Spec creation is the new high leverage skill, but the secret is to let agents help us shape them. The best specs come from letting AI interview us with clarifying questions. And we respond using our experience, our tastes, and our knowledge of what this build actually calls for. That was one of the drivers behind my early work on my agent OS system. But now Cursor and Claude Code include this interviewing phase in their plan modes. So we shape our specs through this Q&A to dial in the details and then our agent executes. Now, why does this matter so much? Well, because when we don't front load our effort and our expertise on the spec, our agents build the wrong thing fast. And that's how we go in circles. But shaping up a great spec, that's how we can really make an impact as builders who can leverage AI. Now, this next key skill is what I think gives those of us with full stack experience a real advantage if we're willing to use it in this new context. Now, AI can implement any pattern on demand, but it can't choose which pattern is right for every situation, given all of your goals and priorities at play. Should this be a monolith or microservices? How should you handle state? What's the right caching strategy? When do you need a message queue versus handling it synchronously? Now, if you don't know what most of those terms mean, of course, you can let AI make those technical decisions for you and see how far you get. But if you do have experience with systems architecture, then you can avoid a lot of those hidden costs of choosing the wrong technical approach for every situation. So your specs and your builds will be that much stronger for it. Now, if you have any experience with managing a team of people, then some of those skills will transfer over to the skill of managing agents. But some things are completely different. In fact, now we have a whole new domain of work that didn't even exist two years ago. Context engineering at its core is really the skill of how we actually communicate with our coding agents. It's about understanding exactly what our coding agent has in its context at any given moment. The mechanisms and the tooling that enable us to manipulate and clarify what bits of information each coding agent has available to it. Even the way we structure our instructions and our sentences giving clear sequenced directives to our coding agents, it can look and sound quite different from the way that we would use natural language when talking to a human teammate. So learning how to manage what your agent knows at any given moment and structuring your directives in the most effective way is now a core part of our craft. All right, now we get into something that's both a skill and a general mindset shift in how we approach our work. I call it workflow orchestration, and it's about developing your intuition and your feel for knowing which tool to reach for in every situation. And this involves keeping an understanding of what actually drives your personal workflow and knowing the tools that you have available to you. For example, getting familiar with a few frontier models and knowing their nuances, their strengths, their weaknesses, knowing when to work in the terminal versus the IDE, when to delegate to subagents versus keeping the context intact. We know the landscape is rapidly changing right now. And so you need to build the muscle of being able to quickly evaluate new tools and see whether they genuinely improve your workflow or not. That's why I began this video by tracing our recent history in this AI era so far, because when we know where we've come from, we can more easily evaluate new tools and know what's genuinely new and useful. And when you can orchestrate your workflow, you're not just reacting to change, you're directing it. Now, if nothing else, I hope that this video helped to motivate you to stay ahead of the curve in this new era of building with AI. And even if you've been skeptical, 
I think now is a great time to turn your experience into an unfair advantage. That's exactly what I do here on my channel and at Builder Methods. I help professionals build better with AI. So here's your invitation to join us. First, hit subscribe on the channel so you don't miss my next videos. And leave a comment to tell me what you'd like to see me cover next. After that, be sure to get your free Builder Briefing, which I send every Friday. And get yours by going to buildermethods.com. Subscribers are always the first to hear about my live workshops, which change from month to month, and they cover what's working right now. And if you're serious about advancing your craft in building with AI, then I invite you to join my Builder Methods Pro community. It's where professionals and newcomers alike, we share notes on what we're learning and building. Pro members always get free access to my live workshops and access to my library of project-based video training. So whether you're building for yourself or building with a team, thanks for following along. Let's keep building.